Pat is entering the final year of his rookie contract, y'all. There's been some talk about whether or not he'll get an extension from the Bulls at some point this season. No extension yet. And uh, I think a lot of Bulls fans feel like he's got to go out and prove something this season. This is the last year of his rookie deal. He has got to show us something more than what he has shown us through the first few years of his NBA career. Now, gentlemen, I, I will give Pat some credit because a lot of Bulls fans wanted him to more confidently shoot some threes and keep that 40 plus percentage while upping his three point attempt rate last season. He did do that. We still saw some moments where he was hesitant when he had open looks, but he increased his three point attempt rate and kept knocking him down at a very respectable uh, percentage. So that's great. So personally, when I looked at, we know what Pat can do on the defensive end. And we believe that he could still continue to build himself into one one of the better multi-positional elite defenders in the NBA. He's got the frame for it. He's got the quickness for it. I shifted offensively. I'm happy with Pat's three-point game. I want to see more of Pat using his body inside. When, when he forgets how strong he is, it drives me crazy. It drives a lot of us crazy. So my goal for Pat this season is a little bit of a weird one, but I really want to see it happen. I want to see 100 or more combined dunks and and one field goals made from Patrick Williams this season. Finish through contact at and around the rim and dunk, 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 young man. (laughs) For some context, his and one field goals made through his first three NBA seasons, 17, four in his injury shortened season and just 10 Patrick Williams played all 82 games last season and had 10 and one field goals made dunks by year 51 7 59 I want the and ones to go up I want the dunks to go up he had 69 combined and ones and dunks last season Get nice. that number combined above 100, please, for the love of God. Use your muscles, Pat. You have muscles. Use them. <laughs> I love this. I really do love this. This is awesome. Like, I really do love this right here. Because, yeah, like, for him to get that, all it means is he's being more aggressive, and he means that he's more sure of himself. And like you said, Matt, it's definitely one of the things that is frustrating about him because you just look at him. And you're like, you're just a massive human being, man, with skill. Like, you're just not big and standing there. Like, you're big and skilled. Like, you should be just dominating some of these cats. Not every game, obviously, but there are definitely games where he should just be dominating a little bit more uh, on the interior. So, no, I like this. I like this a lot. And I'm going to be watching it closely. I'm definitely going to be on that. I like this. Yeah, super creative one. I feel like the last couple of people we've been looking at like three point attempt rate and you know assist percentage and stuff like that. Like, go put the ball in the basket at the rim. I think that's like we we talked about that uh, so much last year with just like can he put the ball on the deck and attack closeouts? Is his handle good enough to get all the way there? We know how big and strong he is. We know what kind of leaper he is. Just go put the ball in the rim, and I think that is going to really change the way teams guard him. It's going to change the way that he probably believes in himself. I, I think that is a really, really good one, really creative uh, prove it number. I like it. I saw some people in the comments talking about Pat's rebounding as maybe something that could help, you know, offensive rebound, get a putback, maybe get fouled on the putback, um, and, and needing rebounding to be an element to open up Pat's game offensively. And I don't disagree with that. If you recall – my prove it for Pat Williams at the, this time last season was to increase his offensive rebounding percentage. <laughs> Spoiler alert, he didn't. It actually went down. So, so much for that. I don't care how you get your and ones and your dunks, Pat, but please start using your body on the NBA floor. Please. 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 I'm not asking for much. <laughs> All right, Pat last game. year. Yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. Pat last year, sixth on the team in rebounds after Booch, Drummond, Patrick Beverly, Damar, and Zach. Like, wow. Wow. Patrick Beverly, Tate, wow. 
That just made me a little angry. And like, <laughs> that's the, the Bulls, I assume that's you're talking about. Bulls I assume you're talking rebound. about rebounds per game. What are you talking about? Yeah, rebounds per game. Okay. The I'm Bulls like, team. Patrick rebounds, Beverly was a like, bull for like six days, so I thought it was about it's, to freak it's, out. It's boxes and elbows. You got to get into position. Uh, like they team rebound. Vooch does a really good job of like boxing up three guys at once, and that kind of Robin Lopez sort of role. But mm-hmm. like Patrick, your power forward to grab more than four rebounds a game. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Get in there. Um, Jacob in the comments wants Pat to get to the free throw line some more. I, I mean, I wouldn't hate that. Wouldn't you got to learn how to. Yeah. You got to learn how to draw a foul. If you're talking about Pat drawing fouls when he's trying to, you know. Break somebody down off the dribble. We haven't really seen that version of Pat yet. Um, Big Dave, where are you going for your goal for uh, Pat Williams this upcoming season? First of all, shout out to Shirtless Wonder, who's in the comments, who said that to make me feel better, should he put a shirt on? Never put a shirt on. So that was such a good comment. Never. That was such a good Never put comment. a shirt I mean, on. Absolutely. Shout out. Unless, <laughs> unless it's a shirt from the CHGO merch locker, which I saw Thanks. our CHGO Sports Insta shared. The shirtless wonders uh, Instagram of him wearing our CHGO red bull shirt. So appreciate you, big guy. Awesome, man. That's awesome stuff, man. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. Um, Patrick Williams, sir. I'm kind of in the same vein with you, Matt, about what I want to see from him. But what mine is, is what I would like to see him do is I want five games of at least 20 points. I want Ooh. five 20 point games from Patrick Williams. Look, it's no secret when Patrick Williams scores, the Bulls are better. So look at this right here. Here's some stats for you. When Patrick Williams scored 16 points or more, the Bulls were 10 and 3 last year. When he scored 20, they didn't lose a game. You know the problem with that? He only did it twice. Two times in 82 <laughs> games, Patrick Williams scored 20 points. That is unacceptable. Once was January 4th when he scored 22, and the last one was April 7th, the game before the last game of the season. He scored 23 points in that game, man. When everybody was resting. Everybody chilling. And then he puts up 23. No, ridiculous. Patrick Williams' best season with 20 points or more was his rookie season. He had three. He had three games where he scored 20 points. Obviously, that second season he got injured and he had that big game against um, uh, the Timberwolves when, again, everybody was out. Game 82. Yeah. Correct. Game 82. So, yeah, he just hadn't done that. He has never scored back-to-back games of 20 points. He has never done that yet. He has not. He has yet to do that. The closest he Least came, surprising stat I've ever heard. Least yeah, surprising the closest stat I've ever came, heard. <laughs> Yes, and the closest he came, though, was when he scored 22, and then the next game he scored 18. And guess what? They won those games. <laughs> like, that's what it is, man. When Patrick Williams scores, the Bulls are better. Now, I'm sure some people will say, well, yeah, when a fourth option can score 20 points, I'm sure, you you know, you'd be a better team. First of all, duh. Yeah, we know that. The second thing, though, there aren't many fourth options that have a guy like Patrick Williams who has the ability – to actually be able to, not saying he's going to, but he has the skill to actually get you 30 points and 12 rebounds and four assists. Patrick Williams has that kind of skill. And have that kind of skill as a fourth option on your team, you at least have to have at least five games where you drop 20 points on someone. Because there's going to be games Vooch is off, there's going to be games DeMar is off, there's going to be games Zach is off. You're going to get your opportunity to shoot the basketball. And you'll definitely get those opportunities if you're doing what Matt is saying and you're getting those rebounds and you're going inside and you're dunking on people getting those and ones. That is going to help as well. A very good three-point shooter. That is going to help his uh, point total as well. So I just want that to increase because just like I said, Matt, with the uh, and ones, if he's getting those 20 points, that just means his confidence has improved. And that's Mm. what that means because it's simply that. It's not no skill thing I need to tell and to show Patrick Williams anymore. Everything is about his confidence. Everything is mental with him. And I think that he can do this. He's only had three in his career. That's his high. I want to see five. Give me five games of 20 points this season, Patrick Williams. I love it. And I think the other thing is, and this kind of leads me into part of what I was choosing for mine, 
is even in that 22 point game, I think it was against the Nets, it wasn't like he just hit six threes and got right. hot. He got to the line seven times and he made mm-hmm. all seven of them. And that's part of what I wanted to see in addition to a handful of other things, which Stephen, if you can throw those up, uh, I, I'm getting greedy with Pat. I want to see a 13, six and two and a half season. I want him to get to the line two and a half times a game. And I want to have him shoot five threes a game. Nice. Wow. I just feel like that's not asking that much, but it's so much better than what we saw last year. Like you said, Matt, his, uh, his defense and the improvement that he made as a shooter was great. Um, doubled his three-point volume and shot over 41% on threes last year. Uh, averaged almost a steal, almost a block per game. Had a positive uh, defensive EPM. The Bulls were better on the court with him than without him on the defensive end. But he averaged 10 points a game. He scored over 15 points a game uh, 13 times last year. Like, Ricky O'Donnell said this a couple times on Cash Considerations, and I thought it was a great point. Like, points per game, kind of a dumb stat, but like, Patrick, Give me some points per game. I want to see him score a little bit. Uh, we mentioned the rebounds. Pat, double-figure rebounds. Guess how many times last year? Once. I think I saw I'm somebody in the comments one, just now say one time. Yeah, I was going to say twice. One time. <laughs> wow. One time this past year. Uh, averaging four rebounds a game, career low, despite playing all 82 games and a career-high 28 minutes per game. Mm. That's not good enough. I, I think six rebounds per game is like – a pretty average number. I don't think that's asking too much. And then the assists, uh, that would be double what he had last year. And I think that's a good reach for him because he needs to be more involved in playmaking. He needs to be more involved in attacking closeouts and spraying it out. And that's how you generate assists. When the Bulls struggled mm-hmm. last year, it was because like, we, as we talked about, they would, you know, DeMar would get into the lane and then kick it out and there would be a turnover or a, a bad shot or, you know, resetting the offense because nobody wanted to do anything. I want Pat to attack those closeouts. That will prove to me that he's worked on his ball handling and gotten better at it. We've seen moments where he's been a good passer. Like, find the next guy, keep the advantage going, and generate some more assists. I think that's great. Um, the three-point attempts, five per game. Last year, 3.4. year before that, 1.7. So he doubled it last year, and I think he can put up even more. It doesn't necessarily need to be on the same efficiency. Like, if you're shooting five threes a game at 38%, I would be thrilled with that. Um, He doesn't have to only shoot wide open ones. He's going to get a lot of those, but I want to see him stretch uh, just the quality of shots. I want to see him take a little bit more difficult shots, not pass up ones that are moderately contested. He needs to get those up. And then to me, the biggest one, and he's talked a lot about this, is the free throw attempts per game. Career low last year in free throw attempts per game, 1.3. He is a very solid free throw shooter, 86% last year, but to go down from 1.3 last year from 2.4 the year before that, it just, again, speaks to the fact that he's not attacking closeouts. He's not getting into the lane. He's not keeping the advantage moving. And he's not finishing around the rim and drawing contact and dunking the ball, to Matt's point. So, like, if you just look at those numbers again and you were to remove Patrick's name from them, 13, 6, and 2.5, and that's not, like, anything super flashy, but that would be a huge step forward for Patrick um, I think that would be like a, a smash A plus season for him if he could take that kind of leap. I think a lot of people just want him all of a sudden to be at 18, 20, 22 points per game. I don't care about any of that. I want him to get around 12, 13 points per game. I want him to grab some more rebounds. I want him to shoot some more threes. I want him to attack the rim a little bit more. And I want him to keep defending and shooting at the level he's done that. That's a really good player, even if it doesn't like pop off the box score stat sheet. That is my proof for Pat. I know it's greedy to ask for all of that, but like, Those are the steps forward in each of the aspects of his game that I think are really important for him. That's going to prove to me that he's taking a big step forward. Like that's a foundation of a really solid player. Then you start to build on that in other ways. But like that tells me he can do all those things at a better level than he could the year before. He can score it better. He can finish it better. He can drive it better. He can get fouled better and he can move the ball a little bit better. That I just, I need to see all of that from him. Mm, I love that. Will. Do you think, Will, and we can kind of use this to bridge into talking about Tory Craig coming up next, do you think that Pat needs to earn the starting job out of the gate for that stat line goal to be achieved? Or, or do you think he can put those numbers up coming off the bench? 
I think it'd be difficult coming off the bench, but similar to Kobe's prove it, my, my proof for Kobe, which was 28 minutes per game. It's the kind of thing where it's like, he's playing so well that you can't afford to have him on the bench. You can't afford to put him in a situation where he's not being out there because he's so productive that you just need to get the most out of him. I also think with those numbers, it tells me that he's learned how to play alongside DeMar, Zach, and Vooch at a higher level and succeed next to those guys. The Bulls, like, I know everybody always likes to stay in sports. Like, we're not making excuses. But the Bulls have made a lot of excuses for Kobe in the past with injuries and changing roles. They've made excuses for Io when it comes to being on the scouting report now, and that's why he's not performing against teams in his second year. They made excuses about Patrick missing almost a full season due to the thumb injury that kept him out during his second year. Like, I don't want to hear any of that anymore. Those are excuses. Like, these guys just need to get better. I think that's really what it comes down to. And if the Bulls have any hope for their future, it's because those three guys take a step forward. Like, period, point blank. They need to be better. And I think it starts with Patrick. I think he's got the highest ceiling of that group. And if he can do those things, he's going to earn minutes. He's going to force Billy's hand to be on the court. And again, I don't think that's asking all that much. 13 points per game, six rebounds. Like, he can do that. He can absolutely do that. And if he does, it's showing me that he's gotten so much better in all these different areas. And that he's putting you know, the, the necessary pieces together to really take a continued leap forward. We know progress is not linear. There's going to be games where he goes backwards. There's going to be a season like last year where in some ways he went backwards, but like I'm done with the excuses for all three of those guys. And especially Patrick, like he was in the NBA. He played 15, 20 games that year that he broke his thumb. He's like lifting, he's learning, he's watching film with the NBA team. Like it's time. It's year four. It's time. It's time.